Stevie Aaron here with you for um, a little sneak preview of the history of wrestling superstar series. The first entry in the superstar series is based on the classic tag team of Brett the Hitman Hart, Jim the Anvil Neidhart, the Hart Foundation. Um, as you can see, it's a nice sized book. Uh, nice picture on the back. That was originally going to be the cover. Um, nowhere near as thick as I was expecting. When the team told me they were doing this, I thought they were absolutely bonkers. I thought it was a massive undertaking. What is the Superstar Series? Well, you see, the idea being, um, James Dixon, I talked to him on the phone about this, and he said what they were planning on doing is focusing specifically on favourite superstars or favourite tag teams, in this case, of obviously, the Hart Foundation, and analysing and reviewing, using the traditional... Um, pro wrestling scoring system which is explained there um, every single televised or just about every single filmed match from the Hart Foundation now obviously the business was completely different in the 1980s and 1990s to what it is today there's the contacts featuring just about every single filmed Hart Foundation match now how was it different well obviously uh, these days you've got so much TV each and every week you have marquee matches all over the place on Raw on Smackdown uh, you've got 14 pay-per-views a year but back then you had region specific television shows uh, you know that most of them featured just squash matches and some of the squash matches that Hart Foundation had uh, you know aren't reviewed in this book there's some notable exceptions such as as we get to the first year 1985 uh, the very first match in the WWF there you have it uh, the very first match of the Hart Foundation actually 26th of March 1985 um, it is just a squash but, you know, as I was saying, the television was just full of these things, these squash matches that lasted, you know, two minutes or less. Their opponents got absolutely no offence in whatsoever. Um, now, the exceptions was were, were, of course, they did marquee matches, you know, uh, maybe like a feature match on, on WWF superstars or, or, or on primetime wrestling where they showed some of the action, actually, for the house shows. Because what the WWF used to do is um, tape... Um, you know, well, show, show there, show, full shows live. There's one there on the first page. Um, and there you go, televised on the Prism Network, and it'll have been a deal with with, with that particular network to show off uh, match, you know, cards from the the Philadelphia Spectrum. Um, there's the very first match between the Hart Foundation and the British Bulldogs. I don't know if you can make that out too well. It happened on the 27th of March, 1985. So they re reviewed all those, and they're not he easy to get hold of. Um, so it, it's an incredible testament to the team obviously they've gone through tape traders they've looked at some of the old Coliseum video tapes the, you know the, the, the official commercial releases from the WWF back then um, that aren't so easy to get hold of now because they're all on VHS um, now luckily the WWE has been you know, pretty good at releasing uh, the best of DVDs and Blu-rays in the last 10 years um, so obviously you know, they've had access to those as well um, but you know um, to see some of these matches um, and you will want to see a few of them um, there's a match there Hart Foundation versus Killer Bees which is qu quite interesting uh, it aired on Primetime Wrestling tells you the date there uh, but it was taped on the 18th of August 1985 it didn't make the air until October um, that, that's what TV was like that then you know they didn't have live TV every week um, as you can see, the reviews are accompanied by these great illustrations. Uh, we'll move on. Can't turn the page here. And, you know, we're not talking about, you know, two-line reviews here. You know, they go quite thoroughly in detail. Now, remember that these are just reviews of Hart Foundation matches, so you're ignoring Bret Hart's singles run and, and even Jim Neidhart's singles run, which is, is a shame, but no, it, it's when they were a tag team, but that means, it, it, you know, it also includes, the, the book also includes reviews of, of Battle Royals that the Hart Foundations were both in. Uh, great picture of Dynamite Kid and David Boy Smith there. Um, a lot of matches with the British Bulldogs. Unfortunately, a lot of the best matches with the Hart Foundation and British, Bull, British Bulldogs are reportedly, you know, lost forever because they happened on house shows that weren't filmed, which was a shame. Which is a shame, but it, 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 it's just the way that the, the WWF worked back then, I guess. Look at this. 
It's incredible. I mean, this is incredibly geeky. I should point out. You know, if you but it, I mean that in the in 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 the best possible sense because um, you know I've I've never seen anyone do anything like this where they've you know you've they've focused on a particular wrestler and they've looked at you know each just about each and every televised match. Now I mentioned that obviously not all of the squash matches are included because you know they they do squash matches, but the notable exceptions such as the debut or there's one actually. I think it's on. It's near the start of the book, where they they messed up the the tag team finish of the heart attack, and I believe last time of checking that match is on YouTube, although it might not be for much longer, obviously given the way the WWE are um, these days. Um, you know, checking the internet, they don't want um, any of their stuff online if it's not official, and. Um, I can see you might have problems, uh, you know, getting hold of some of these matches. But you, you know, if some of the reviews, you know, obviously Heart Foundation and British Bulldogs matches, a lot of them, um, you know, come close to, to being four star, five star matches, um, and you'll want to try and get your hands on them. I mean, that's quite interesting for me. You've got a, a, a just starting the, the nineteen eighty eight there, um, you know, the Strike Force versus the Heart Foundation. Um, the, the 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 two matches that happened on the same day. I mean, this this was the nature of the beast back then. This is the way the WWF ran things, where they were running, you know, three shows per night, and you can see what was different about those matches. You know, in, 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 interesting tidbits like that. There's a review of the first uh, Royal Rumble. There, great picture of demolition. I'll run through this quickly. Um, we'll move on to 1989, and obviously there's a few little hints there where it looked like. The uh, the Hart Foundation were were going to separate entirely, but uh, plans were scrapped, and they kept them a team for a little bit longer. Nineteen ninety. Um, and uh, it it's all very very interesting stuff. I don't want to give too much away, but you can see there's a lot in here. Um, there's a great match. I mean, you know, Heart Foundation versus Legion of Doom. That was, um, I think, it, is it, it tells you. You know, it's on. It's on the. It's on the Road Warriors DVD. Uh, it was also filmed for the WrestleFest '91 uh, commercial tape. So it does tell you in brackets. You know, the the best way to get some of this stuff. And then great picture of the Nasty Boys there. We've got the last ever Heart Foundation match. That being the last ever match where uh, Jim Neidhart, Bret Hart were a tag team. Uh, from the summer of 1991 at uh, MSG, and then the next match they had together, 1997, and of course it's the classic match, 10-man tag team match from the Canadian Stampede pay-per-view, um, that many people give five stars, I won't tell you what the rating is in this book, um, I would have given it five stars personally. Okay, but now, so you, if you're not satisfied with all that, then check this out. Look at this. At the back of the book, Heart Foundation Match List. Uh, please note, this is the most accurate listing of Heart Foundation matches ever compiled. Uh, there's bound to be a match missing here and there. Um, it's just the way the records are. But it's, I think it's pretty accurate. I mean, look at that. that. That is impressive, every single match. And it even shows you, you know, what it was like back then in the WWF, the way that the sort of... Um, you know the house shows were were more important than television, um, um, and you know a lot of the same matches. Um, I mean, look at that! Look at that run against the British Bulldogs. So many cage matches. Unfortunately, none of them were filmed, or none of them that I know of. There might be um, might be a hand handheld footage of that somewhere. But but even you know the guys have done such an amazing job. Um, it, it's doubtful that you'd, you'd you'd find any of that stuff. But it is all compiled in there. And it, it's an incredible book, more so if you're a Heart Foundation fan like, like like I was back in the day. And check it out, there's going to be more from the Superstar series coming soon. Um, and, and that's what it's like, it's just, there's nothing like this out there. I've never seen anything like this out there. And uh, check it out, Heart Foundation, Superstar series. And uh, in the next video I'm going to be looking at the Ultimate Warrior book. Ta-ta!